Hello, good day. Welcome back to Go on a Run. And today we're going to be talking about how do you define relationships between your collections. We're not going to look at how to insert or update those collections in today's videos because it would be a much longer video and you'll see we'll actually spend a lot of time just talking about what relationships are and how to think about them. A little bit how to think about it because this is going to run. It's not really like a database tutorial or really I'm not, I'm not going to spend too much time getting into database stuff. All right. So why don't we just jump right in? So here I am at the pocket based website. I'm going to go to documentation and we did the old intro downloading installing and we talked about collections and we briefly mentioned the different types of collection, base collection, view collection, which we did not talk about and auth collections, which we said the user's collection is an auth collection because you have all these other things about authenticating, but we didn't create an auth collection because we don't have a need for capturing different types of authenticated users yet. So we only created base collections and I didn't go through the different um, field types, but here they are that PocketBase gave you. And the only reason I'm going to show you now is because we can talk about selections. And basically what it allows you to do is to define a field that have a set of values that, are, and it could be single selection, where you must select from the list of options provided. Or you could do multiple selection where you give them, let's say, five things, but they could select two out of three, one, four, all five, that sort of thing. Same thing with relation, which is what we're going to mostly focus on today. How do you define like one collection or row or record in a collection is related to another one? And of course, you can have multiple also where you could have one thing related to multiple um, other records. So let's say, for example, I had a table um, or a collection rather called comments and I want to keep track of all the users who thumbs up or thumbs down a particular comment. So on that one comment for that one record, I might have a, a relation that is of type multiple that says thumbs ups and the other one thumbs down. And that each one of those um, feel because they're a relationship of multiple would then link to the user's table. So I could see the set of users who have thumbs up or thumbs down that collection. So that's an example where you might use something like that. And of course, files, you can have multiple files or just one file, but we didn't talk about stuff. All right. So we talked a little bit about the API rules. What we didn't talk about is some how you define the filters on it. We know that how if um, a API rule has something like admin only, then only admin could authenticate. If it's empty, then anyone. And we mentioned that, oh, you can say that, oh, it's for specific users. And we saw that when we created our user um, users um, records a lot in a previous video, that if with the right rule, only the authenticated users could see that record. And we'll get back to filters much later. We did not talk about a client um, SDK much, though I did mention from the beginning that, oh, pocket based come with support for Java and Dart, but we don't use those. So we are using straight up um, the HTTP REST interface. We talk about authentication. We saw how we can use the REST interface to authenticate as a user. Once authenticated, how to use the authentication token, the JWT, to then make requests. We didn't talk about file uploading and handling, but that's gonna be uh, later if we decide to go that deep. So what I want to talk about today is working with relations. And so you should absolutely read this section, but um, let's just look at this. Let's imagine that we're building out a blog application where users can make a post. And so a post would have like a title and then maybe it might have multiple tags. So for example, a tag, let's say users are posting on climate change, um, programming languages, stuff that's funny, um, news. So a post, one post could have multiple tags. And so there you can see you have multiple relations and it could have multiple values. And there would be the um, IDs from the tags table that would be um, in a list in this field, stored as list here. Um, this is different than if you had selection 
um, if you had a selection, then it wouldn't be pointed to another table. It would just be the set of values that you defined when you define in that um, collection. And then, of course, you can see that comment. Of course, posts can be created by a user. It doesn't show that here, but a post can be created by some specific user and will be created by some specific user. But so are comments. Comments would be on a specific post by a specific user. And it will, of course, have its own message you know, commenting on that post. In my previous example, I mentioned that, you know, comment could have thumbs up and thumbs down, but maybe you want to put a thumbs up and thumbs down on the post also, or only in a post. And so you want to see which users thumbs up it or thumbs down it, right? So that would be another instance where you'd have a multiple relations and you'd have a field maybe called thumbs up and another field called thumbs down. And it would be multiple relations tied to um, referencing users. Okay. So let's now go start up our pocket base. So let's say um, we're building out um, a e-commerce site. Um, someone will come and ask, can you show how to do an e-commerce site? And you'll see the end why I tend to stay away from the sort of very specific applications. But let's just say we were to entertain this idea. Um, and so what we're going to say is for e-commerce site, we want to be able to um, have a set of items that users can browse. And so we have items collection that's going to have the name of an item or the price for it and, you know, some description of the item. And of course, um, we want to be able to have those items categorized. Now, I could use category. And when it comes to managing product, they're well-defined categories of which product is in which category and so on. But I want to be a little bit more flexible. So I'm going to say I have relation, um, I have labels and you can have multiple labels attached to any one item. So let's say I have a book, I can have it attached to the label, you know, book, fiction, scary, a bunch of different labels attached to that same item. And so now we need to have a set of labels that we're going to use. And we want to put labels in a table so we can update it. We can probably do things like have different text for English and different other languages versus just having a collection of labels that um, we keep as a selection. So we'll see that later on. Remember, um, pocket base allows you to have this idea of relations, multiple relations, or multiple um, or selections, which can have a collection of values, if you like. And so we have our labels collection, and that's going to have an ID and the name of the label. And then we have in our items collection a reference, essentially, for that. Now, if you're not familiar with database terminology with references and so on, this is going to be you know, outside the scope of what I'm going to be able to, to get into. So I have to assume that you at least know this. Now, if we're going to sell some items, we have to keep track of what we have in stock. And the reason why is that if you, um, someone come to your store, browse for some particular item that you say you sell, and then you can't tell them if you have one, five, or if they order one and you don't have enough, or they order five and you only have four. So your stock is going to be keeping track of for any particular item, how many do you have in stock? And maybe you source this particular item from diff multiple different suppliers. So maybe you'll have to have a reference to a supplier where you can get this item. And then if I supplies are low, you know, the, the items, um, your stock is low, you have to know who to buy it from or where you can, who you can reach out to get more stuff. So that's where your supplier's table come in or supplier's collection. We're not going to worry about the manufacturer of the particular item. The supplier knows that, and we probably don't care. Now, in terms of this e-commerce site, users need to be able to take their items and put them in a shopping cart. So we have this idea of a cart. Now, remember, any one user could come and shop multiple times. So they might have multiple shopping carts. Now, at any one time, they're not going to have more than one shopping cart open. But once they have a shopping cart open and it's not ordered yet, they can add things, come back to the site and add things to that shopping cart. They might have a pay, you might support pay, different type of payment methods, whether you support PayPal, credit card, whatever, cash, whatever, right? Money order, all this other stuff. Payment method itself is not a relation to another collection. It's just a set of values. And you can say of these values, this set of values, you can only pick one and even order. Instead of a card being ordered or not ordered, true or false, or yes or no, 
it could be the status of that cart, whether it's been closed, you know, it's been ordered already, whether it's been shipped, all this other stuff. You might have actually have multiple values to say it's been ordered. Yes, it's ordered, but it's not shipped, or yes, it's you know waiting for shipment, all these other things, or waiting for payment. There are multiple things that you might have to keep track of. And in terms of the items that's in any one cart, now notice. I didn't put the items in the cart because any one user could have multiple cards. And sure, you could put it all in one table, but I prefer to do it this way where I say, well, the cart items are in a separate collection. And so this is like when I create a shopping cart, I can reference that shopping cart and then I can keep all the items that goes with that shopping cart separately. So I can say like how many items or the quantity of this particular item I need to order. Maybe you want three of this, one of that, two of that, that sort of thing, right? And again, this is more getting into database design, like should we really do cart items separately or not? And everybody's gonna have their own opinion about it, but this is how I decide to do it. And so what we have is that our cart items need to refer or have a relationship to items, and the and another relationship from to the actual shopping cart. Now we're not gonna keep adding too many more lines here, but of course, um, you know you would need to keep track of the user who created that shopping cart. But we're gonna leave that out. Now, what does this look like when you actually put some values in? And don't think that though these values, these are not real values, they're just some values I put in there, so they're not gonna add up or anything like that. This is for illustration purposes only. And so you can see what some of these values might look like. Of course, for ID, we have discussed the um, thing already about whether you should use um, increasing numbers or not. And so I'm going to, for simplicity, I'm using numbers here, but like one, two, and so on for my row IDs or record IDs. But as you know, PocketBase doesn't use numbers anyway. So we're gonna keep that um, a picture of this to the side and let's add it. So for the purposes of this exercise, um, I'm going to delete our items um, collection. I don't have to, I can certainly update it, but I wanna make sure that we're all on the same page. So I'll leave users collection, remember that comes with PocketBase and so if we look at our relations, we can see like which collection can we start with? Well, we could pretty much start with any, but we have to go back and forth and edit it because if the dependent um, collection doesn't exist, then you couldn't add the relationship. So you just have to create the collection, then go back and add it. So that would be the case with our items. If we had kept our items table, we couldn't put the relationship to, la to labels because we don't have labels yet. So we have to create the labels collection then go edit our items collection to update it with a field for that relationship to label. So instead, what we can do is just build out the leaf ones first and then keep going with the ones that depend on them, okay? So let's start off by doing um, that new um, a new collection and let's call this one labels. And the fields that we have there is just a text and it's the name. And that's all we need for labels. And we'll say create. Um, we can now create our items collection because that has a dependency on label. So we can say items and the type is base. We have a plane, which is the name of the item. Um, we have plane, which is the description. We have um, price, which is a number. We have um, labels, which is a relation. So we have labels. And in terms of the thing that is um, related to, it's related to the labels collection. And it's not a single thing. We say multiple because we want the ability to attach multiple labels to any one item. And we'll see in the next video how we can use that. And there are other things that we can put in, but for now we'll leave it at that and we'll just say create. Another collection we can create is our suppliers. This collection, and that has text, the name of the supplier, a contact field, and of course we can add other things like address and so on. All right, so we'll leave it at that. Now we can create our collection stock. 
Now, the stack, if you remember, um, keeps track of our items and who supplies it to us. So uh, how many we have in stock? So we can say we have um, a relation to, this is the item, the specific item, and it refers to something in this items collection. It's a singular thing. Um, that's a, just one specific item. We can add another field, which is another relation, and that's gonna be the supplier for this particular item. And so we'll say the supplier, and it's a singular um, supplier for this item. Again, if you have multiple supplies of the same item, you can do that too. So it's however you want to build this out. Um, and then quantity. So it's a number. Maybe we might have something like reorder limit um, or reorder level. And um, this is going to be a number that says, once you reach this number, reorder. There are a lot of things to think about if you want to build out, um, depending on how deep you want to go into this sort of thing. And so then um, what would we have? We have cart items. But remember, cart items refers to both item and the cart. So we don't have the cart yet. So let me show you what would happen if we build that. So let's just start and build cart item. Cart items. And we'll see that how in cart item, we have, we can't create a relation to the cart yet because we don't have a cart, but we could create a relationship to item because we do have that. And so it's the items collection and it's a single thing. And then we have the number of things that we are going to put in our cart for this specific item. So this is quantity. And uh, we could have the line item cost. These are all decisions you make. Like, do we update that every time the quantity change, or do we create a view on top of this that actually do the calculation dynamically? So I'm going to leave that out for now. I'm going to say create. Remember, we also need our cart. So we have carts. And for a cart, we have a relation to the user who created this cart. And so that's going to be a relation to our users table, a single user who created this cart. Remember, these are records, so we could have multiple cards for, um, for any one user. It's just that at any given time, there's only one card that is active, right? And that's all business logic. And we can potentially put the total um, for that card. And again, this could be some new calculators of you on top of this, or maybe, maybe discount, let's call it discount because maybe for whatever reason, we have um, a discount going uh, from time to time. And so we can add that. Now, the next thing we want to do is our payment type. And that's going to be a select. And we only want them to select one of the many options we have. So we can say payment type, payment method, for example, or type. And the choices they have is to use a credit card, Maybe they can use cash. They can use Venmo, PayPal, right? Um, maybe Zelle or whatever. And so they only can choose one of these options. Now, if we want them to be able to pay with multiple options, we could like split the payments across multiple payment methods. We could say multiple, and then we can choose how many of these max they can use, whether it's two or three. So for example, we could say multiple, then going in and configure it out. They can choose a maximum of all five methods, or maybe only two of the um, five methods that we have available. Or, but in our case, we just want one. Okay. And so that's it. Um, we don't need anything else for our, oh, we said um, we had this idea of whether the order was filled or not, like, you know, um, ordered, right? Whether this is still a open shopping cart that they haven't clicked on by, you know, the, the checkout, they haven't done, we haven't done the checkout yet. So we could call this checked out um, as a Boolean, right? So instead of ordered, we can, yeah, we can leave that as order for now, but it could be checked out. And so here's the thing, we're missing one thing our cart item, remember, it has to refer back to a specific shopping cart because this is just a list of items in a shopping cart. But we didn't have the shopping cart at the time, so we can go edit selection, and now we can go add, we can do relation, and now we can say the cart. And then which collection is that? It's the 
cards collection and again just one um, shopping cart and then we can say save so this is another way of doing it where you can go back and edit back and forth all right so this is what it looked like to define the store schema that we came up with so far and what i would encourage you to do is to try just go add in stuff and so you can go add some record if you don't want to try doing it from the command line because or using HTTPIE or any other way that we talk about how to post and create and those sort of thing just try creating them here and then you can create some items that then um, have those fields and you can see that pocket based UI makes it super easy for you to create items um, we're gonna see later on how we can use the RESTful endpoint to work with relations. All right, that's it. Like I said, this is already a long video and most of the time was spent talking about what? What relationships are like. So if you think about what we've done today, we spent most of our time talking about relations and whether or not you should, you know, use card items as a separate collection or not, or whether your payment method should really be a separate collection or just some values or think of list of values um for your cart and so those are all decisions that have to do more with data organization and database storage and normalization of data more than it has to do with programming and so that's why i tend to stay away from those type of application because they're very niche there are only a few people who want to know how to build an e-commerce site and so i try to stay away from the very specific type of application because they get further and further away from core goal and how do you solve specific things like authentication or how do you represent the data in Go? And it goes into more like, how do you architecture the application for these special domain? And outside of just the storage, we didn't even talk about the requirements for the application. If I'm building an e-commerce site, how is it going to be deployed? The deployment has implementation on the design. So your deployment requirements can have design time um, constraints. And if you want to deploy it on a single host versus being able to deploy it on multiple hosts, which parts of the application you can split out and so on. And so for all those reasons, I tend to stay away from those very specific application because my style of teaching is that I, if I were to do an application like that, I want you to understand it. And so I will have to you know, spend time talking about data representation, and the database terminologies, list of values, and all these other things, and pros and cons. And I think that takes it further and further away from Go on the run as just something that's dealing with Go. If I had another channel or I had the time, then I'd have another channel dedicated to like, how do you build application or this type of enterprise application or something like that. So that is just a little bit of a rant to explain why I will not at this time be able to do those sort of specific niche applications because they're very specific to a few people some people want to see an e-commerce some people want to see an inventory application somebody else wants to see a chat application somebody else wants to build a game and it's just very specific and to build any one of them you have to now make a bunch of assumptions about how it's going to be used and its deployment and everything and all that could be very different and again for different people they're going to want different things. And so I don't think go on the run is the place to look at that sort of. With all that said, thank you for your time and attention and for coming back. If you've made it this far and listened to me talk, <laughs> I appreciate it. If you are not a subscriber, I'd love to have you as a subscriber. Please consider subscribing. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much. Please thumbs up the video, comment, regardless of whether you're a subscriber or not. I would love to see some um, comments and thumbs up let me know if you have an issue well you can say that too um, it's better to, to explain what your issue is than to just say thumbs down that that's not helpful um, like see thumbs down like okay what was bad about it so so, so leave a comment and um, thanks again Mikhail for being a patreon subscriber if you would like to join Mikhail and be a patreon subscriber here are some of the ways you can do that and that supports the channel and supports me Otherwise, take care and see you in the next video.